Hi, this is Oliver Lucanus from Below Water. So we've digitized another old video from the 1990s. Today we want to take you deep into the Amazon forest, actually the Upper Orinoco. There's a place in the Upper Rio Atabajo where the river splits away from the Colombian and Venezuelan border and the Rio Temi and Rio Atacavi enter the main branch of the Atabapo. This place is almost a week upstream from the nearest city where the Atabapo meets the Orinoco. This remote blackwater habitat is where we collected Uaru Fernandez Yepezi and Altum Angels. The water is stained like dark black tea and the sand is purest white silica and the rocks are these odd shaped blocks of black basalt. The forest here is just light balsa wood because the layer of earth is very thin. Along the river these small creeks enter the Atabapo. They are often very clear water but really shallow. In these habitats, at pH values of less than 5, there is not much algae growth, so plecos are not so plentiful as in the Orinoco. Mostly we see this Lazi ancestral species. The silica sand is very fine, and lots of fish live in this zone, in the leaf litter and also in the sand itself. Even during the day we can see Ambledoras here and these Mastiglanis asopus. If you get too close, all these small catfish will just dive into the substrate and emerge only some minutes later. Mastiglanes are soft and have no spines on their fins. Their barbels are up in the current, always looking for potential food. If the camera or hand gets too close, they instantly disappear in the sand. This water is so dark, but it's also clear and it's possible to see the fish in it. Along the shallows we found small groups of young Cyclotemensis and lots of Biotodoma buffarini. They sift the sand for food and turn over leaves looking for small things to eat. And here we encountered the first Epistogrammas, but they were not so common. Amazingly, Epistogramma samophila prefer deeper water from 1.5 to 2 meters deep. The sand is unlike any other, like sandblasting crystals of pure white that squeak when you walk on them. The main river is almost red underwater because the sunlight breaks in this crazy reddish color over the white sand and dark water. The light racing over the white sand is hard on the eyes and it takes a while until you start to spot the fish over the barren bottom of the river. What is so special about this epistogramma is that it prefers to live in the main river, not in a small creek like most of the other species. Just like the closest related species, Epistogramma diplotania, that lives in the main branch of the Rio Negro in Brazil. In the deeper water, the substrate has some crevices, like large plates of rock lying on the sand, and the Epistogramma are everywhere. Interesting that they seem to live together with these small Crenicicla. I have seen that elsewhere with Dicrosis and Dwarf Crenicicla also. Maybe they share the habitat for food because when the epistogrammas dig, they stir up small prey for the crinicicla. Or maybe the crinicicla are messy enough feeders for the epistogramma to grab some particles when they do catch prey. There is certainly something going on here. Because it is so common to see this kind of relationship. Maybe there is some complex symbiosis behind it. These crinicicla orinoco dwarf do not eat the epistogrammas. They like much smaller prey. And you can see a lot of this interaction between the two species here. In our video are all different pairs, in different locations, and we could see this in many places in the river. But these crinicicla do eat fry of other cichlids, and they are very common around breeding pairs of geophagus or heros when they snap up their young. Where the epistogrammas were breeding, I was unable to find crinicicla feeding on the fry. Maybe their young are just too small to be of interest. A single male may visit the caves of several females, all within his territory. The size seems to depend on how many available rock crevices there are in the vicinity, because there is little cover over the sand and plenty of larger fish interested in eating the tiny dwarf cichlids. Epistogramma are usually one of the easiest fish to catch in the Amazon because often enough you can scoop them up with a small net with a leaf litter or by dragging a small seine along the beaches. But this Epistogramma samophila disappears deep in the rock crevice the moment it is approached by a net. To catch these tiny cichlids they have to be pushed into a net one by one after lifting up the large rock plates at the bottom. 
that is not an easy task in deeper water. Where the bottom structure is more complex and the stone plates and some larger rocks create a maze of potential hiding places, the Epistogramma and Dwarf Perenicicla occur in large numbers. Their colonies remind me a little bit of shell breeding Lamprologus from Lake Tanganyika, where many adults live in close proximity to each other. Under the rocks we found few other fish, but we did find this very odd looking grey catfish with frog-like eyes on top of the head. Maybe a Leptoramdia species. Where the caves were large enough, some Doradids, Tatia mosaica and Goldiella equus were also found. Also really common here are Satanoperca daemon. The earth eaters of course like this acidic water and fine substrate, and they are very common on the Brazilian side in the Rio Negro and all along the Casiquare and Inirida in Colombia to the north. We saw a lot of these juvenile leporinus. I assume it is Leporinus altipinus, but these striped Leporinus are all quite similar. Like in many rivers, they come to inspect any disturbance to see if food has become available. Juvenile Heros libirifer also live here, but not the adults. They prefer smaller rivers where there's more wood and more complex tangled places for them. In the evening, different fish start to appear, and this region has a bunch of odd-looking pimelodids and other catfish. This is Goldiella echis. Likely they would eat any of these tiny epistogramma if they are able to catch them in the crevices. Along the edges of the river there is more wood and tight tangles of roots. At night it is easy to collect Altum angels here because they sleep in this sector. Altum angels are common, but at night they are really deep in the banks, sort of wedged in the roots of the trees and a bit difficult to pull out of there. Another place we found Altum is in the narrow cracks between these black rocks, where they could barely turn around, often many of them just wedged in there together. All that makes sense once you see the megamouth catfish. These cats are essentially all mouth. They can swallow fish bigger than them. The exterior of the fish is very soft and it can bulge out with the texture of a plastic bag when they eat a large fish. They are preying on the altum angels and other cichlids sleeping along the banks at night. Astrophysis petrarchus can eat any of them, even the spiny catfish. This is one of the strangest fish in the Amazon to me because nothing else looks similar to this catfish. I hope you enjoyed our look at this habitat. Make sure to share our video and subscribe to this channel so we can show more wild habitats in the future.